Sometimes you need to automate actions in tools that Relay.app doesn't integrate with yet. In this tutorial, I'll explain how to make custom HTTP requests to external APIs to accomplish this. And I'll be doing so by creating a simple workflow that automatically adds tasks that are created in Asana into supertasks.ai. And I'll be assuming that you know your way around API documentation of the, of the service that you're integrating with. So let's look at the API documentation of supertasks, specifically for the created task API. There's a couple of things here. Uh, there's the endpoint, the URL that we need to be calling, the request methods that this API supports, uh, only post here, any headers that it expects, um, most notably the uh, API key for my uh, integration. Then there is the request payload that uh, Supertasks expect, in this case, um, uh, a JSON object containing the name of the task which is required, and then some optional fields like the description and some labels. And then finally, there is the shape of the response object that Supertasks will return back to us if there was a successful request. And this response will contain fields that we might want to use in the further steps of our workflow. So uh, let's add the custom HTTP request step and we can find this in the webhooks menu under the step menu. And the first thing that we should do is we enter the URL of the endpoint that we are going to make a request to. So let's uh, copy paste that uh, in here, remove the additional space. Uh, then we select the request method, which was post, uh, remember correctly. And now we're going to define the headers that um, Supertasks wants. So let's uh, add the uh, authorization header. So I'm clicking headers over here. Uh, the first name is authorization. And then there will be the bearer token. I'm going to add that in here. I need to replace this with my actual key. Let me grab that from elsewhere. Um, all right, there is the, the key. And you also notice that there's a content type header, but uh, Relay will be adding this automatically by um, uh, uh, as configured here as our request format is, uh, is JSON. Now, there's a couple of things, uh, a couple of ways how you can specify the request body. Uh, firstly, we can manually define the structure of the JSON object that we're going to send, uh, which always works. However, it's uh, it's slightly error prone and uh, maybe a bit uh, a bit clunky to do so. What's easiest if you have access to uh, some example uh, JSON that um, the API expects, like here, we can paste that in this dialog over here, and we will infer. What are the what is the structure of the uh, of the object? So let's save this, and we see now that there's a, a JSON object that, that appears here um, with the, the structure of the uh, request payload. Now, what is very important to realize here is that because we pasted in an example that didn't just include the parameter names but also some example values, we need to replace these because what this step would do now is automatically create a task in Supertasks where the name is always set to required name of task, which is obviously not what we want it to be. Uh, in fact, we want the name of the task that we're going to create to come from Asana, uh, which is called the title over there. And the description of the task, let's make that the description that is also coming from, from Asana. Now, I don't use labels or tags in Asana, but um, let's still always add some, um, uh, some labels to tasks in Supertasks. Uh, so firstly, work, and maybe the other one, projects. So to summarize, like every time this step is executed, there will be a task created in Supertasks with the same name and description as it had in Asana, uh, and two hard-coded uh, labels named uh, work and project. Now, next, we want to de um, define the shape of the response that we can expect from this API so that we can use it in next steps. And similarly here, we can configure this manually, um, but let's do it automatically. And we're going to do this by sending a test request to Supertasks. And the nice thing here is that this will immediately test whether we configured the part um, uh, that was specified above correctly. Now, because we're using variable information coming from Asana, like the title and the description, I can select one of my tasks in Asana 
um, to use for this test request. So in this case, I'm going to select a task that is called create HTTP request tutorial video um, and use that to send a test request. Now at the top level, we see it worked. There was a test request sent, uh, which was successful. If there was an error, it will tell you and it will help you explain uh, like what was um, uh, uh, what was the error. Now let's just walk through this real quick. Um, first of all, this is what we sent to super tasks. You can see all the headers that we specified as well as the, uh, the request body uh, with the name and the description, which came from Asana. So the description of this task was apparently similar to the webhook trigger video. And then there's the hard coded labels. And then here's what we got back. Let me expand that. So there's a, uh, a JSON object uh, with a, uh, with nested uh, a data object that says like hey, a task has been created with this ID, this title, this description, the task is not completed. And um, uh, these are the labels that were applied. Cool. So again, this was just to infer the structure, but you know, it actually created the task. Um, and here is a structure that it inferred based on the, um, the example request, and I'm just saving that. So now there's the response structure fully defined, and now this is reusable in any of the steps that come after this. So now to close up, let me add a Slack uh, step that sends a, um, uh, a message to a, uh, to a Slack channel. And what you can see from here, I can access via the HTTP response object, all the fields that came back from the uh, SuperTasks API. So I hope this was helpful. Please reach out to us if you have any questions uh, about this. Thank you.